Hello everybody, welcome to another exciting, thrilling episode of Bibles on the Bench, where we take five Bibles and compare them, scripture by scripture. I haven't said that in a while, <laughs> it's because of, you know, circumstances. So here's one of the Bibles, the English Standard Version. This is only the New Testament though. One day I'll have to get the full Bible of that one. The Great Big <laughs> NIV Bible, Super Study Edition, super handy. The Holy Bible, placed by the Gideons. And of course, last but not least, we have the 1984 edition of the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures by the Jehovah's Witnesses. And we also have the new <laughs> um, Silver Sword 2013 edition of the New World Translation by, again, the Hofus Witnesses. So, this is a real fun week. This week, you must pardon my computer because I'm running out of ink. Ha ha ha! I can't believe what the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society on JW.org is going to be studying this February 2017. Now here I am way back, way back here in um, November 2016. So I have to thank Kim and Mikey, Mike and Kimmy, Kim and Mike. <laughs> anyway, and they're underground elder there who shall remain anonymous because they didn't say who he was but at any rate doesn't matter they brought up this to our attention they made a video hour-long rant and in fact i am amazed that this happened this is <sighs> like i remember when we were all witnesses this is back in the 90s and whenever we had a problem with the society and all that stuff. What was the first thing they always said? You know, if it was a problem that they couldn't solve through scriptures or whatever, it's just a mystery problem, right? Or if you had a doubt or something, a doubt, but you weren't thrown out, you know, they would always say, trust in Jehovah and in, his, in Jehovah's time, it will all be sorted out. This watchtower that's coming up, ha really sort something major out major so how do you get a copy of this currently go to <laughs> I don't want to even mention this but but go to <laughs> jw dot I mean dot org and, uh, gotcha. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, go to jw.org. Go under publications. Click on that. Go under the watchtower. I believe that this is how we got into it. I think so. See, I don't have a computer here where I film this. Uh, but anyway, go over there. Go under the watchtower part and click on February 2017 study edition of the watchtower. This is how you find this. And yeah, like I say, I mean, my printer's out of ink, so this is all supposed to be in color, and it's got like light gray headings that just did not happen, and uh, scriptures in the brackets that didn't actually come out because I only have black and white ink in there. And But where it was significant, I took a pen and I wrote in what blue pen and I wrote in what needed to be written. You can compare this by going to JW and uh, <laughs> yeah, the study edition of February 2017. But holy, I can't believe this has actually been printed by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society themselves. This gem of an article will completely change the way you will view 
the Watchtower and Bible Tract Society from today forevermore. That's how big this announcement is in this this study edition. So you want to go I guess to who is leading God's people today. That's a study article. At least that's what I got printed up here at the top for the address. If not, just read the whole magazine till you find it. But it should be where they show the elders and everything. There's like a picture of the governing body that's supposed to be here. It didn't print out. Ah, gotta get some ink in there. I need some money for ink. If you would like to subscribe and donate, I need 60 bucks to buy the colored cartridges because it's a cannon. No, um, no, I'm not extorting money from my followers because I have followers because all of you subscribe. So you're my followers. <laughs> I am misleading you. No, anyway, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not misleading you. I'm just re relating the facts. <sighs> anyway, okay, enough goofing off. This is the important part. Um, if you go into that article, go down to paragraph 12. This, when I saw Mike and Kimmy making this video originally, blew my mind. I cannot believe that Watchtower in its, uh, what would you call it? Watchtower, especially the governing body, is supposed to be the echelon. So you have, you have, uh, how can I symbolize this? I got nothing good to symbolize this with. Hold on a minute. Let's see what's over here. This might be appropriate. I'll do it with Kleenex because at the end of the article, every JW is going to be crying about this. <laughs> Okay, so here, this package of tissue will represent Jehovah. So you have, <laughs> you have Jehovah up here, okay? This is how, <laughs> oh, I feel silly. It's like that game where you have the thing and you don't know what it is and you're trying to guess. Anyway, okay. You can only do this in Canada. All right, no, anyway. <laughs> okay, so our understanding as Jehovah's Witnesses, even going back into the 90s where I came from, out of this stupid religion, um, going back into the 90s where I came from, from this religion, we were led to believe this. Here's Jehovah, okay, at the top, the head of our organization, okay, and then his son Jesus, right? And then underneath is the governing body, right? So from the governing body, when they print a magazine, a watchtower, right? Now the governing body is supposed to be made up of anointed people. Anointed people are supposed to be inspired by God, right? So these anointed ones inspired by God sitting down here would pray to... Okay, they want to make a magazine, right? A watchtower or a book. So they pray to Jesus, and Jesus in turn brings it to Jehovah up top, right? And then from Jehovah, it comes back down to Jesus, and then back down through to the governing body, who then produce it into this, or that, or that, or these, or this, or this, oops, or this, or even <laughs> return to Jehovah. <laughs> right? Okay. Are you guys sitting down for this? Now, here's the thing. We were always told that the governing body was inspired of God, right? Because God's given them, through Jesus, I guess, the message. And the governing body is supposed to distribute it all out to everybody and save the world in their 
the JWs. Now get ready for this. This is written. Paragraph 12 in this February 2017 upcoming watchtower. They're all going to study this. Huh. This is like the pin dropping. The, the, the grenade pin being pulled out of the grenade on the 14th. Or sorry, on February 2017. Paragraph 12. Are you ready? This will blow your brains out. Unless you saw the Kim and Mikey video, but still, this is mine. This one. <laughs> the governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. This is in the watchtower right there on paragraph 12. Can you read that? I can't believe the society printed this. This takes everything they've done from 1870 or whatever until now. And this is going to leak out on the JW community. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm part of the leak. Part of that tap. That makes this no longer inspired or this definitely not this anyway or anything else they've published and let's continue as to why this makes <laughs> watch our Babylon track society invalid the governing body is neither inspired nor infallible inspired so all those prayers that they apparently do now i've got crisis of conscience so i know they don't pray they just print crap and speaking of crap here's one of them this makes a nice toilet paper no actually it's too brittle on your neithers <laughs> anyway this is not inspired neither is awake any of that therefore this is the governing body who are not inspired. And this is in their watchtower coming up. I don't know what they're doing. Anyway. Actually, I have good thoughts. I'll share them with you in a minute. The governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. So, they are not getting inspiration from God, Jehovah, Jesus, the angels, anybody. They have no inspired thoughts and they are not infallible infallible i've got oopsie oopsie i got the dictionary right here i'm just thought of this now let's look at what infallible means i know you guys know what it means because you are very smart but let's look it up for for the real thing here, D -d 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 insecure, haha, <laughs> insecure, well they will be, infallible, and fruit, informal, no, nope. inflorescence, ooh, nice and bright, uh, where are you, infinite, well, definitely not, infernal, well, they might be going there, um, <laughs> infectious, oh my goodness, Yes, Infar fal infant, infant, yeah, infancy, infallible, uh, incapable of error, dependable or reliable. Actually, that's good that I looked that up. Gives you a couple extra words for you, for ya, yeah, for ya, laddies. So, therefore, it can err. err in doctrinal matters, or in organizational direction. This is the governing body saying all our stuff, well, could be in error. This, what we printed here, could be in error. What we printed in here could be in error. What we printed in here could be in error. Wow! I can't believe that. 
what I learned in the 90s could be an error. What, what watchtower uh, got their kids questions young people ask, the answers could be an error. Making your family life happy could be an error. The secret of family happiness could be an error. The theocratic ministry school. Actually, this one won't be an error because they're already er erroneous. <laughs> no, anyway. But what does the Bible really teach? In error. Error. I sound like the Star Trek I'm watching, you know, with Nomad. Error. Error does not compute. Too bad we can't say to it. Well, if you've committed all these crimes, what is the punishment? Death, death, blows itself up. Woo, wouldn't that be great? Hey, hey, Mr. Witness guy knocking on my door, leaving me this stuff. You realize you're an error? Error, error, that'd be great. Well, then I have to clean the mess, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Watchtower robots exploding everywhere. Okay, no, enough joking there. But, okay. Therefore, it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. In fact, the Watchtower Publications Index includes the headings, heading Beliefs Clarified, I should look that up, which lists adjustments in our scriptural understanding since 1870. Since 1870. I wonder if they're honestly going to say we once believed that in pyramidology, oops, we once believed that the, uh, um, what do they call it, the re reclamation or whatever, was in 1874, oops, 1897, or oops, 1914, oops. I, I don't know if they actually say that, but this is what's being implied here. Anything that you look up, JWs, on wiki, oops, uh, adjustment. Here, we'll list the adjustment on that. Of course, Jesus did not tell us that his faithful slave would produce perfect spiritual food. What? All this time, we are the watchtower. We are God's representatives, giving the proper, the faithful and discreet slave, it's a governing body, issuing proper food, spiritual food, at the proper time. February 2017. I'm not making this up. Jesus did not tell us that his faithful slave would produce perfect spiritual... Jesus himself, the faithful and discreet slave, has mentioned in... Pardon me for the delay. The Holy Bible, God's Word, is supposed to be 100% perfection. There's no supposed to be. God's word is 100% perfection according to everything. Anyway, it's 100% perfection. If Jesus is saying, my spiritual... Okay, sorry, faithful slave... Why would Jesus be issuing a faithful slave that wasn't faithful and giving wrong information? Watchtower, you just threw yourself and everybody that follows you under the bus and backed up and rode over him a second time and backed up again till they were paced and then stepped out of the bus and went, ha ha ha, what are you doing? This is totally, wow. The 90s witnesses left you with something. What did you do with it? I don't know. Well, I'm glad I left, but you know what I'm saying? This is crazy. So how can we answer Jesus' question? Who really is the faithful and discreet slave? You can't anymore. I, Matthew 24, 45. Ha ha ha. Okay, yeah. All you... <laughs> all you uh, watch tower Bibles, you fall down over there. Because you're not, you are invalid. You are an error. And Watchtower says so. What am I looking up? Okay, Matthew 24, 45. Wow. 
I mean, this is how it's it's affecting me. I can't even read my Bible because it got so messed up there. Matthew twenty four forty five. Okay, now this is funny. They're quoting this scripture here, twenty four forty five. Who then is a faithful and sensible slave whom his master put in charge of his household to give them their food at the proper time? Wait, that's not the scripture I want. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah, that scripture. Who then is a faithful and sensible slave whom his master put in charge of his household to give them their food at the proper time? So, Watchtower is just admitting that they are not the inspired slave. I'm looking over here at 24 and 4. Jesus answered and said to them, his disciples, See to it that, you, that no one misleads you. See to it that no one misleads you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. Uh, Watchtower is saying they are in error. If you're following Watchtower, how do you feel right now? What evidence is there that the governing body is filling the role of the faithful and discreet slave? Uh, if they're saying they are not inspired or infallible, Wow, there's nothing there. It's crazy. So now, paragraph 12. Just did it. Did them in. The governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. Therefore, it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. They are admitting that they can make mistakes and they're not inspired by Jehovah or Jesus or anybody. Well, maybe one person. <laughs> the guy that wears the red pajamas. Evidence of Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has helped the governing body to grasp scriptural truths not previously understood in error i'm adding that in not see it doesn't say that but remember chapter 12 they are infallible and uninspired how has the holy spirit helped the governing body if they admit they are not inspired now my bible reading <laughs> i have just read matthew i've finally got up into matthew here so i'm a new testament boy now and I just read 14. <sighs> Up to 14, sorry. So I'll just find you a scripture here that I've just read. Okay, Matthew chapter 7. Yeah, Matthew chapter 7. I wasn't looking when I hit record. Matthew chapter 7 and verse uh, 15. We're going to go down to 23 here. 15 to 23. Now this is out of the Bible, the real Gideons. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. A good tree cannot produce... Oh, I just read that. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? 1914? 1974? 
World Trade Center time. And in your name cast out demons. And in your name perform many miracles. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. This watchtower is admitting they're not inspired. How can we believe them? The Holy Spirit has helped the governing body to grasp scriptural truths not previously understood. They're admitting to error. How can the Holy Spirit be in error? For example, reflect on the list of beliefs clarified that was referred to in the preceding paragraph. In error! In error! And uninspired. Surely no human deserves credit for discovering and explaining these deep things of God. Surely, no. That's true. No human. <laughs> Yet they always claim the credit. Oh, we know it's 1914 because this. We know Michael the Angel because of this. We know this stuff because it's all been inspired. It all came from Jehovah to us as we pray prayed for it, which they never did. There's stories, countless. Sorry, the batteries ran out, so I had to replace them. Ah, but I was smart. I actually had... A friend of mine gave me another set of rechargeable batteries. So I have two sets. So when one goes dead, I charge the other. When that one goes dead, I replace them with the first one and charge that one. So I won't be cut flat without dead batteries. Or with dead bat whatever. Uh, so I've kind of lost my train of thought a little. But I was going to say, there's countless stories out there. And this is going to, like, uh, Ray Franz with Crisis of Conscience and the whole deal. Where they said, you know, um, all, all the ex-witnesses that ever got out have been saying for years that the Watchtower is untrue. You know, the governing body is not inspired. They're just a bunch of... of men in Bethel that are making this stuff up and none of it is scriptural. And guess who just agreed to this? What's going on, Watchtower? What's up, Watchtower, you know? This is unbelievable! Unacceptable! No, anyway. <laughs> oh, I don't care what you do. This is actually a good thing you did because it gave all us apostates the final say. You are a lie. And everything after this, we can question you and your representatives, your door-knocking, jw.org-loving groups of people. Of course, we have to save these people. We love them. But this, you just kicked your teeth right out. Because how the heck... Is any of them going to be able to answer any questions that anybody has now? The only way is if the regular community of people did not see this and just blindly follow in. But for us that know this, whoa, your society, the ever infallible Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, just admitted that they are not perfect and that they are uninspired. Does this sink in? How do you feel about it? This witness that came to the door wanting me to return to Jehovah. This study article just killed that whole thing. How can I do that? When? The governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. Subject to errors. Errors. In doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. Who and what is this pamphlet for? Ex-Jehovah's Witnesses who feel guilty or whatever because they haven't learned about TAT. The truth about the truth. 
you're giving them this so they can go, oh, you know, I've been out for whatever, three years being shunned and disfellowshipped and everything else. A uh, prisoner to my family. Thank goodness you brought this. Guess who it's signed by? Governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. Dear fellow believer, as you know, the Bible is largely a book about people. Many were faithful men and women who faced challenges similar to our own. They had feelings like ours. Some were weighted down by troubles and anxiety. Others were deeply hurt by family members or fellow worshippers. And a number were plagued with guilt over their own mistakes. Uh, interesting that they left out. And a bunch read the Bible and found out we're shit. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> uh, anyway... I'm going to leave that in. Had such individuals left Jehovah completely? No, many were like the psalmist who prayed, I have strayed like a lost sheep. Search for your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. Can you relate to those sentiments? No. Okay, I'm just going to skip down here. Please know that in it, that... Sorry, please know that it is in a similar spirit that we have prepared this brochure. First, we listen carefully, considering the circumstances and expressions of a number who drifted away. Then we turn to the scriptures. <laughs> Do you see what's happened? Then we turn to the scriptures. This is coming from the governing body who is oh, phoning me right now. Because I know I'm making this video. <sighs> Hang on. Yes, that was the governing body. They want to apologize for the magazine. No, I'm just kidding. Um. Yes, getting back to this whole thought. Okay, where, where was I reading? Oh, I hate that when that happens. <sighs> Is it truly Satan that's phoning me? <laughs> Marty, I was frozen. Today. Anyway, okay. Ah, uh, yes. Then we turn to the scriptures, prayerfully examining accounts of how Jehovah helped his servants in the past when they faced similar circumstances. Governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. Therefore, it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. They just admitted here, this is an error, error, warning, Will Robertson. Finally, we combine those scriptural accounts in error with modern day experiences, which we also did in error. Finally, we combine those scriptural. Uh, finally, we combine those scriptural accounts with modern day experiences to produce this brochure. In error, we warmly invite you to examine this material, which is erroneous. Please be assured of our sincere love for you. Another erroneous statement. Signed, the governing body. Do you see what they've done? They have kicked themselves to death with this Watchtower magazine. Everything you can read from this point forward, witnesses and ex-witnesses combined in unison, Know that all this is in error from uninspired, infallible people. Wow, I can't believe they printed this. They slit their own throats like Kim and Mikey said. They cut their heads off and put them on silver platters. There is no way out of this. There is nothing a Jehovah's Witness can do now to back himself up. There is nothing he can show you out of this anything that has your governing body attached to it anything published by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society anything from this point forward in error and even backwards of course too but in error undeniably undeniably from the governing body printed in their own literature. I can't believe this. Surely, Jehovah 
has finally gotten hit to his time to clear this stuff up for us. Finally! Wow, maybe I should thank Jehovah. I, I mean, wow! This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. How can this not be what they just said? They have made their entire organization invalid. Because how can you trust this now? Offspring of vipers indeed. How can you trust what they are saying? Like, think it was Isaiah where they say, you know, if a prophet comes to you, what he prophesies isn't true, don't believe him. And yet here they're saying, don't believe us. We're not inspired. We're nobodies. We're just Joe Blow. I managed to have a big printing press. Like, wow. Huh. Uh, evidence. Uh, this is like crazy stuff here. The governing body echoes the Apostle Paul. <laughs> echoes him, but cannot talk like him. You know, an echo? What is an echo? Okay, it's a reverberation of a sound that came from a living person at one point. The governing body is the echo. The problem is the echo degrades when the person says something. Maybe at first it's pretty big, but eventually it keeps echoing and bouncing around until the sound disappears. I think that's what happened with the governing body on this one. Their sound. We are the holy, inspired ones by Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. Until it disappeared. Well, what happened? Ah. Okay, the governing body echoes the Apostle Paul who wrote, These things we also speak, not with words taught by human wisdom, but with those taught by the Spirit. But they just said they're not inspired. How are they... How are they, uh... Speaking with words taught by the Spirit when they're not in Spirit-inspired? After centuries of apostasy and spiritual darkness, can anything other than Holy Spirit explain the rapid increase in spiritual understanding since 1919? Pardon me, you are saying you're in error and uninspired. There ain't no Holy Spirit there. The Holy Spirit's not helping you at all. You're uninspired. So you surrendered that understanding that we all had, that you were all, uh, you know, uh, this comes down from Holy Spirit. It, it may come down, but it isn't coming into the Watchtower Bible and Track Society because you're not inspired and you just admitted it. Evidence of angelic assistance. The governing body today has the colossal task of overseeing an int international preaching work involving over 8 million evangelizers. Remember what they just said, paragraph 12. The Watchtower Publication Index, sorry, therefore it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. Governing body today has a colossal task of overseeing an international preaching work which they're doing in error. Why has this work been so successful? Eight million people. Jim and Mikey say the Mormons have three times that many. Mormons. Remember, these are the guys that don't know what the scriptures are because they believe in um, uh, Joseph Smith and his teachings. Those people have three times the amount that the witnesses who are 100% accurate because all this is coming down. The Holy Spirit. Oh, well, oh, oops, oops, excuse me. They're not inspired anymore. Maybe that's why they only have 8 million. Have you guys ever thought this stuff through? Wow. I'm going to become a Mormon. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm not going to become anything because scriptures say free from, flee from her, my people, Babylon the Great. The world empire of false religions. They just said we are in error because we're uninspired. They're a false religion. I didn't say it. It's coming up February 2017. Ah, unbelievable. For one, okay. Why has this work been so successful? For one, angels are involved, but you just said you're uninspired. In many cases, publishers have called on individuals that have just been praying for help. They have called on them. That doesn't mean they're being directed. I could be watching TV and you could call on me. 
I could be reading my Bible and you could call on me. The thing is, you're coming to the, I could be not be at home and you're calling on me. How are you to know who, what a person is doing behind closed doors? <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> my mind just went on a naughty way. Um, but what, <laughs> well, some people do come to the door with no clothes on. <laughs> but still, how can you say that's directed by Holy Spirit? Were you directed by Holy Spirit when the person came to the door naked? <laughs> hey, the Holy Spirit wanted you to see this. No! That is just like shooting fish in a barrel. Oops, I managed to get one. You know, that's crazy. And you're not even inspired. So how can you say that the angels are helping you find these people? <sighs> Here's another erroneous thing. The overall growth of the preaching and disciple-making work, despite fierce opposition in some lands, has likewise been possible only with superhuman assistance. Error. Error. You're uninspired. There's no superhuman... <sighs> Unless some guy's, like, ultra-strong and, like, taking the tree and ripping pieces off the tree and turning it into paper just by breathing on it or some crazy thing. No! Not superhuman. Reliance on God's Word, paragraph 15. Consider what occurred in 73. <sighs> nah, I don't know. It's all about smoking again. Smoking, Marty! I was smoking! A smoking, all this stuff about stupid smoking. Nowhere in here does... I, you know, I'd love to look this up. I'd love to go in, get in a time machine, go back to, to ancient Israel when Christ is walking on the earth to see how many people are smoking some kind of tobacco product. I'd love to see that. Just because this is so silly. Smoking, smoking, always smoking. <sighs> they had wine and... and Beer and Egypt had beer way back. Maybe they didn't smoke tobacco, but maybe they smoked something like, I don't know, tannin leaves or something. There has to be some evidence of somebody's cigarette sitting somewhere. Come on. People are doing crazy stuff. Well, I guess that would perish. But there has to be something like that. What about Tintin, Cigar of the Pharaohs? That's just a cartoon. But still... Smoking, like... Smoke ascended to heaven off the altar. There, how about that? Ooh, smoking. People would have breathed that in. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a... Getting... But this is crazy. The Watchtower explained why an unrepentant smoker should be disfellowshipped. A smoker can be disfellowshipped. Uh, yet a pedophile doesn't. They get covered over. An elder in the wrong doesn't. Smokers and people that ask questions based about this, ask questions about this, get disfellowshipped. Those are the people who get disfellowshipped because smoking it looks bad when you're going door to door with your nonsense. I'm not even going to pull a watchtower up. That's why it doesn't look bad. Nobody wants to see a JW sitting out in front of the house, butting out on your banister. That's why smoking is a disfellowshipping event. Or whatever. It's not because God is saying don't smoke. God knows we're all imperfect. If God didn't like smoking, they would have wrote something about it back here. It would have said neither drunkards, nor, for nor fornicators, nor those that strike a match onto a tobacco product will inherit God's kingdom. There's nothing like that. Nothing. Lovey. Anyway, uh, there's nothing like that at all. And even, even there, it says, Jesus turned water into wine. It was one of his miracles. So you can have wine, just don't be drunk on it all the time. And a drunkard, the accidental drunk, like, I had too much wine and now I'm drunk, oops, isn't the problem. The drunkard is a guy that's continually doing it. It's the addiction part of it. That's what they're saying. You know, if you're continually a drunk, 
have an alcohol problem, you know, you won't inherit God's kingdom. That's what they're saying. Again, all this is in error. But I'm not here to put down smoking. I'm here to put down their crazy beliefs. And like I say, that's why they don't want publishers smoking, because they don't want somebody, I represent Jehovah, uh, excuse me while I butt out on your porch, or flick my butt into your grass, your lawn, or uh, if you're in an apartment, you know. Oh, sorry, I'm puffing like a chimney here in front of your, your thing, so when you open the door, you're wafted by, like, all my cigarette smoke. They don't want to look bad. That's why they just fellowship smokers. Put two and two together. That's how it goes. Okay, smoking. <laughs> this represents no effort to act in an arbitrary dic dictatorial manner. That's the smoking. This is what's written here. You're telling people that you're going to get this fellowship. You cannot serve God because you struck a match to a tobacco product and inhaled the fumes. How is that not a dictatorship? It suppresses a freedom. It's not a freedom I agree with, but it is a freedom. And you're crushing it, Watchtower, by saying that. And then you're saying, no, 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 we're not the dictators. You just fellowshipped a fellow publisher, a person who who believed this so hard, which was, of course, written in error, according to paragraph 12, they believed this so hard that they wanted to dedicate themselves to Jehovah, your God, and you just fellowship them. How is this not a dictatorship? Answer me that one, somebody in a comment. The strictness really proceeds from God. Which, of course, they're not inspired and in error. God isn't, but the Watchtower is. The strictness really proceeds from God, who expresses himself through his written word, which the governing body has reproduced in error for you, the publisher. How has any other religious organization been willing to rely fully on God's word, even when doing so presented a real challenge to some of its members? Willing to rely fully on erroneous teachings, not God's word, not the Holy Bible. The, the, the Watchtower just put themselves into the telephone game. You know the telephone game. You sit in a circle with like 10 people and somebody says, the Bible is true. And they whisper it into their friend's ear. The Bible is true. And then the next guy gets that. And then he whispers to his friend. And by the time it gets all the way around to the other person, <laughs> according to this, we're uninspired. Comes out the other end. The telephone game. How can they say, after saying we're uninspired and make mistakes, that they are relying fully on God's word? They telephone game themselves to death here. In error. A recent book on religion in the United States notes Christian leaders have regularly revised their teachings to match the beliefs and opinions gaining support among their members and the, in the larger society. If those of the governing body allow God's word rather than popular opinion to guide their decisions, who is really leading God's people today? The governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. Therefore, it can err during doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. If those of the governing body allow God's word rather than popular opinion to get us, who is really leading God's people today? The governing body is not doing that anymore. They don't know how. They're not inspired. How and who will lead the people? 
Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that to bad. Jesus Christ will lead his people. That is who leads the sheep. Return to Jesus, not Jehovah. Return to Jesus, not Jehovah. Return to Jesus, not Jehovah. In error, wrong, in error from the governing body. This is my most intense Bible on the bench ever. And it was the governing body that gave me the idea. I'm an apostate. The governing body gave me the idea to say they're in error and they agree. <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? I don't need to do anything. Bible's on the bench is done forever. What do I need to do anymore? Everything they are saying is in error and uninspired. It's done. Bible's on the bench is done. Kim and Mike is done. Everybody's done. We don't need to make videos anymore. <laughs> we are finished as apostates, and so is the Watchtower. And the Watchtower is saying, it's okay. And I know why they're doing this. I think I have this figured out. I'm running out of these batteries, so I'll be very brief. I think they're doing this. We all know that they're selling properties, okay? There's big money in those properties. Where is it going? No one knows. It's either paying back pedophiles, right? We found this out. Uh, not paying them back, but paying their court bills um, and other things. But I think they're doing a ditch and run. I think they're going to try to sell everything. They're trying to claim here because of the uh, Australian Royal Commission, because in there they say the governing body's not inspired there. And I think they translated it here. They're going to try to sell all those properties and bail out the back door with all that money and disappear. I think that's what's going on here. I really do think that that's... What's going on? They're going to front a couple of buildings and say we're still in business, but I think the majority of them is going to disappear. I think that's what all this is about. So when they say, oh, we're all in error, they're also throwing that burden back on their people. If you believe us when we're claiming that we're in error, it's your fault if anything goes wrong. If you donated all your money to the Watchtower and Bible Tract Society, believing that they are true, and now they're saying they're in error, that's your fault, not theirs. It's a legal maneuver. It's to get them the blame off of them and back onto everybody else for the people that believe them. They're doing what, with this in erroneous thing, they are doing what Jesus uh, or Isaiah said. If you know that the, apostle, the people saying that this is the truth and it turns out not to be true. Pardon me, wow, shook something up. <laughs> not to be true. Don't believe them. And this is what they're doing. They are saying we are no longer true. But please believe us still. See, they still want to get your money and whatever else in there. But they're admitting this right in this upcoming study edition. This isn't just like a watchtower that's like put out there and oh, maybe somebody will read it. Study. Every congregation will be reading this. They may not understand it. But it's right in their hot little hands. Crazy, 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 crazy. Oh, here it is. Oh, I hope I have time. Matthew 25, 34. Come on, batteries, don't fill me now. Matthew 25, 34. Come on, batteries, survive. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed of... My father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Okay, I'm skipping to the guys on the left because this is what Watchtower is not printing, but this is them. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. We are the governing body. We are providing the spiritual food at the proper time. We're not inspired. They just gave you 140 years, or whatever it is, from eight, the 1870s, nothing to eat. That's 
way more than like three generations of people all starving by Watchtower. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and, you, and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they themselves also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then Jesus will answer them. Truly, I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, your publishers, your the guys at the door, everybody, your householders, your the entire organization of the Watchtower. You did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment. But the righteous, those people that read this thing cover to cover and used nothing and still understood the message of Jehovah, I will throw that there, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the three main ones from Genesis to Revelation, who read this cover to cover, who realized that this was a falsehood. In error were these, and these, and these. Those are the ones, the ones that flee from Babylon the Great, the world empire of false religion in all its many aspects of rainbow colors. Those are the ones Jesus puts on his right to say, come with me. And everybody else, now including our infallible Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, are on the left, into the garbage bin they go. Never to be in that kingdom of God that Jesus is talking about in Revelation 21. They're gone. And all those who follow, this is the thing that on that paper that's fallen down, but I don't think I got enough time to pick it up. When the governing body comes forward and says, we are in error and uninspired. If you follow someone in, in error and not inspired, you're going on that left-hand side into the garbage bin of God. I'm sorry to bring it to you like that. I know there's going to be hate comments or whatever. I'm willing to take it because I stake my beliefs in the Holy Bible and in Christ Jesus on this one. Even if there's like scientific evidence or everything else to prove this is all wrong, just from that watchtower alone, I'm basing it on that watchtower alone. And by my reading of this, and I've read this almost three times now in Matthew, it's going to come up to a fourth because I want to read that big mama down there. Big study Bible. There is no way anymore with them. Like Spoon Fed No More would say, Spoon Fed No More. Watchtower Fed No More. This junk no more. All bad, all false. Because Watchtower says it's junk. Quack! Ugh! They did it to themselves. I cannot believe that. I can't believe they said that. Wow, we're all saved. Thank God, Almighty Father, finally listen to all our prayers that in his due time, he would fix this. It's fixed, baby. There's nothing that can be done except for one thing we have to do. We have to print off that jw.org as many copies or even save it as a PDF if we can. I don't know how to do, extract that. But we have to have as many of those as we can. We have to highlight that paragraph 12 where they admit that they are false. And I don't know how. Somehow, if you know of somebody that's starting a study with the witnesses after this point, after November 13th, 2016, or after you watch this video, but from my perspective, have to show that person right from the watchtower. Huh. 
Wow. That. Wouldn't it be funny if I did barf when I said dot org? That the dot org has dotted their death, their own death sentence by printing this. We have to show that. We have to have a copy. If anybody wants to become a witness, we have to bring that watchtower right in their face. It's very nice that you want to become a Jehovah's Witness, but here is a watchtower they printed on February 2017, paragraph 12, where they themselves admit that they are neither inspired nor infallible and are subject to error. Because from this point forward, Watchtower, you've closed your own door. There's no way anybody with that knowledge will ever join you unless they can't see it. But my goodness, you have killed yourself. And like I think, it's all for the money can't be any way about it. Sell those kingdom halls, bring it all back to the society. Pay none of it, because all of us were free, free labor, giving this junk out back in the day, even up to today. Your free labor force, you have just told your final goodbyes to. Unbelievable. I hope Mike and Kim have enough wood and nails and time to hammer in eight million nails into that coffin because I know Watchtower is doing this. I really suspect it. Pennsylvania, Brooklyn, New York, all over the world. Sell that property. Tell them it's their fault for believing it. Cash that check in your Swiss bank accounts and disappear as quadrillionaires because my goodness. You killed your organization with this. And you too. Whatever to see. And when you guys see the broadcast, watch them on Mike and Kim's. But watch for them. Even the governing body. It's being filmed in camera. Right in front of everybody. Face to face. Telling you that they are not inspired. Think on this. I've talked probably for an hour and a half. I'll find out in editing. Anyway, I wish you all peace. Read it cover to cover. Even if you're not... <sighs> Let me put it this way. It's up to you to believe and make this your faith. But on the scientific level, and in order for history's sake, and in order to know, even just to know, don't have to believe. Believing comes after. Knowledge is key. Read this cover to cover. Learn. When they come to your door and they start saying, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. This is your homework. If you can read Lord of the Rings, if you can read a manual on how to cook every meal in China... You can read this. It does not take long. I did it myself in three months. Three months. That was intensive reading, but three months. Read it first for the story. Read it second to pick out things that you like. Read it a third time to delve into those subjects that you like. But read it. Know what is inside this book. Watch videos. Watch movies of Jesus movies. Uh, movies like... Um, Ten Commandments, all that stuff. Anything you can that deals with this book. Watch it. Read it. Know it. So that when, whatever they're going to, how they're going to pull themselves out of this one, comes around in a month or two and goes, hey, you should... <coughs> <coughs> Run out of batteries again. <laughs> Backup batteries. Anyway, if you know this, there is no way they can ever catch you off guard with this. And of course, if you know that watchtower, paragraph 12, where they are admitting they are in error and wrong and uninspired, there's no way 
they can catch you ever. Do not fear these people, as the scripture says, for they have nothing. So, my name is Trevor. This is Bibles on the Bench. Don't know if it's the last episode. <laughs> we'll find out later. I don't think it will be. I think I need to be out and debunking these things. I still have to finish this stinky cheese, which is an error. Ah, I will never be able to give that up from this point forward. There's not even a point to even continue reading this after that paragraph 12, because there's nothing in here. Nothing in here that will ever, ever again not be under question. Did the, watch t did the governing body say this in error, or are they correct? Did they say this in error, or are they correct? They put their own doubts in here. Paragraph 19, when Jesus returned to heaven, he did not abandon his followers. Is that true? Is that an error? Is that true? Is that an error? He, he knew firsthand how much the Holy Spirit, the angels, and God's word helped him to take the lead when he was on earth. Is that true? Is that, is that an error? Is it true? Is it an error? Is it true? Is it an error? Therefore, he has supplied the faithful slave today, which is supposed to be the governing body, with the same assistance. Is that true? Is that an error? Is that true? Is that an error? Is that true? Is that an error? <laughs> Sorry to be annoying, but you get the idea. As anointed Christians, the members of that slave keep following the lamb no matter where he goes. Is that true? Is that an error? Is that true? Is that an error? As we follow their direction, therefore we follow our leader, Jesus. Is that true that we're following Jesus? Or is that not true because we're following the governing body who apparently is supposed to be leading us in error? Soon he will lead us to everlasting life and no human leader can promise that. Watchtower, no human leader. You are, you set yourself up as the governing body who is getting the direction directly from Jehovah, leading us. Is that true? Is that an error? Is that true? Is that an error? You're done. Thank you. You made the apostates not need to apostatize anymore. <laughs> because if you're done, we're done. And there really isn't... Well, I guess we have to kind of help out as a support group afterwards because I'm sure there's now a whole bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses going, What happened? Uh, well, at least the ones that that hear the words and obey. Christ is coming. Jehovah has cleared his organization <laughs> to a point of complete destruction with this. And now Jesus is on the other end saying, Come out, my sheep, the people that really believed me. Again, the separating. The separating work has hit Watchtower directly in the head. On their own terms? I don't know. But that paragraph 12, they just admitted they're in error and they are uninspired. Where do we go? My Lord, we return to Christ Jesus. That's our only salvation. <sighs> okay, this is Bibles on the Bench. I'm going to let you guys go now. Consider all the words. Consider that this is all <laughs> in error. I'm not in error. And Jesus is not in error. The Bible is not in error. The Watchtower is in error. That's the errors. All your errors have now been clarified. Thank you. You might say, but I definitely will say thank you. Thank you, Almighty Heavenly Father, through the word of Jesus. Thank you for clearing this up as to who is your faithful slave. And who is in error? I think this requires me to turn the camera off 
and have a celebration champagne drink. <laughs> if I had champagne. <laughs> anyway, have a good one. We'll see ya.